interior and exterior decor made out of high test concrete? How did the first design bureau that specializes in concrete aesthetics appear? A business that became a realization of his childhood dream. UATV tells about an enthusiastic person who devoted himself to the transformation of Ukrainian interiors and streets with the help of the most commonly used material, concrete. The revolution of dignity in 2014 became a test not only for the Ukrainian political system, but also for its economy, which was wakened by many problems that were postponed. The sharp drop in the Grivna exchange rate and the general atmosphere of uncertainty in the future, all this on the backdrop of the Russian aggression, proved disastrous for many entrepreneurs. However, such a crisis always presupposes that even if the old opportunities are gone forever, new ones should open up in their place. But it is possible at the most difficult times to start from scratch a business that does not even have its own market. Economic textbooks will unequivocally say that the probability of success of such an enterprise is on the verge of a statistical error. However, no forecasts can factor in the fortitude, optimism and ingenuity that is inherent in Ukrainians. No, тогда это был действительно голубой океан. Then it was truly a blue ocean. There was no market here at all. Therefore, again, I did not know that if there is no market, then there is probably no reason to go there, because there is no money there. Now I have experience in creating a market from scratch. Irina Terech calls her business a miracle. Today, she heads a design bureau that specializes in concrete products. The bureau creates many items for interior and exterior spaces using such material. Concrete design is so unique that it attracts customers from all over the world to Ukraine. Many foreign customers turn to us for individual manufacturing. We have already worked with Belgians, French, Germans, Americans, and even with the Japanese. What did Turek find in such ordinary materials as concrete? How did she manage to open a completely new business during a severe crisis? And how does she try to transform the streets of Ukrainian cities? Although concrete cannot be compared with elegant material like marble, it has been known to mankind for at least 4,000 years. The Romans especially valued their version of the artificial stone. Their concrete era is more than 700 years old. In the Middle Ages, Roman technology was forgotten and was remembered again only in the 14th century, but it's rarely still used today. All changed with the only edifice of its type, the Eddiston Lighthouse. The task of building a secure tower on the small rocks in the middle of the English Channel proved impossible for the first two architects. Their towers collapsed. In the middle of the 18th century, John Smeaton revived one of the ancient Roman recipes for concrete and applied it in his architectural draft. His lighthouse, known as the Smeaton Tower, stood for more than a hundred years and would have stood for longer if it weren't for the waves that washed the rocks under the foundation. Smeaton's tower was dismantled and restored on land as a memorial, which has been preserved to this day. Precisely the specimen of the third Eddiston lighthouse showed architects that they had underestimated concrete when constructing large buildings. The unprecedented boom in office and housing construction in the 20th century would have been impossible without this material. I was probably about seven or eight years old when we moved to Kiev with my parents. I was on my way to school and I walked by a construction site. I saw how a huge casing was being dismantled. To be sure, workers took some kind of slush. Everything looked very dirty and unattractive, but it actually turned out to be real magic. It was then when Irina decided that she would become an architect. The first building she designed was a doll's house that she assembled from blocks, albeit not concrete blocks. My dad worked for a tobacco company and one time somehow boxes containing cartons of cigarettes ended up in our home. I took all the cartons, emptied all the cigarettes into one large trash bag and used the cigarette packs to build a huge castle for my favorite doll. It turned out very beautiful, but after that I was very sad and had regretted what I had done because my parents punished me for this. 
Many years later, this doll's house turned into Irina's first student business, the creation of a dummy model for construction companies. After the financial crisis of 2008 in Ukraine, construction of new residential buildings went through a boom. For presentations, many firms needed smaller copies of their buildings. Some of our signed contracts have been revoked. They were contracts with clients whom we have always worked with and who have always been very pleased with our work. It was only because the situation was so difficult that we are barely surviving and we thought drafting such models was the last on our priority list. At that time, Irina already knew a lot about the technology of production and processing of concrete, metal and wood thanks to her education and constant contacts with developers. My idea was about service. I mean, I thought we could implement universal production, meaning one place where you can come, submit a package of drawings and not worry about the terms or quality because you left your product in the hands of a reliable professional who, for a fee, will solve all problems. But in truth, it turned out to be a rather naive view of how things really work. Naive, primarily because in Ukraine, there was no market that worked on the principles of supply and demand. The first clients were found among friends. One IT company ordered a set of items for interior design. Having completed this and a number of subsequent orders, Irina realized that the focus of her business was too blurred. It was impossible to sufficiently get an immediate grasp of several materials and their use. The client was not ready, the market was not ready, and nobody understood what to do with this material and how it would behave in the future. So I decided to pull a tricky move. I decided to give everyone a 10-year warranty on products with replacement at any time, if something goes wrong within those 10 years. Such bold guarantees became possible because Irina independently studied all the small aspects of production of concrete. She recalls that she was so addicted to this work that sometimes she went straight to the supermarket from her workshop to buy some products. I was doing my shopping, buying some expensive wine, and people looked at me strangely because I didn't understand what was wrong. And when I came home, I understood that I forgot to change my clothing because I was very tired. I was standing in line at the cash register of a supermarket in such a disheveled form, with the splotches of concrete on my face, an outrageously funny hairstyle, and holding a respirator in my hand. Thanks to this enthusiasm, today Irina controls her own concrete production facility from the original design to the final product. The favorite concrete things for Irina Turek are pots and vases for plants. She tries to make these simple objects universal. In some other words, she tries to fill them into any interior and at the same time to make sure that they have a unique style. As a rule, Irina successfully does this by playing with the geometric forms and shapes of these objects. She models the future object in a 3D software application and then checks with design colleagues and production workers whether it will be technically possible to translate her idea into reality. If it's a very small product, it could be some kind of milling or possibly a 3D printout. If something has an irregular form, in some cases the sculptor makes a master model. And when the master model is ready, it goes to the molding process. The future form is removed from the master model in several stages. The future form is removed from the master model, then waxed. And in theory, from that moment, it is ready for working with. The form is processed with a special model wax in order to fill the micro pores so it will have a longer shelf life. Each form withstands a certain number of castings, as a rule tens or hundreds, and then you need to make a new one. Making one form can cost from several hundred to several thousand euros. This is the main component of the price of the future product. Filling the form with concrete is a technical issue, but there are some peculiarities here. For example, due to the temperature difference, in the summer it is poured once a day, and in winter every two to three days. Then the product is steamed, processed, most often by hand, and a protective coating is applied to it. Irina refused to use metal frames for most items. The models are designed in such a way to be as strong as possible, without any kind of reinforcement. 
This was possible thanks to the recipe of concrete. The primary factors for us are hydrophobicity, frost resistance cycles, and if the product is pigmented with something in mass, then there is also the factor of resistance to UV radiation. These are the key factors. Simply put, the ideal concrete developed by Irina Turek should not be afraid of moisture, should withstand at least several hundred cycles of freezing, defrosting, and does not fade if the material contains a dye. She managed to improve the material's quality so much that now she gives a 20-year guarantee. This applies to outdoor objects. For example, one such factor is anti-vandalism. This can even be passing dogs that leave marks on pots, as their urine contains substances that destroy the coating, which protects the pots. I devoted my time to the development of a coating that does not react to these substances, meaning that the coating is fully protected. Quality street items are not just the request of individual customers. Having put her business on its feet, Irina became interested in urbanism. She firmly believes that Ukrainian cities do not have enough comfortable street spaces with a functional and aesthetic appearance. This global task is beyond the power of one entrepreneur. Therefore, Irina Turek found a team of like-minded people who, under the patronage of the Kiev city administration, have already begun to beautify one of the central streets of the nation's capital. Capital. This is not only greenery or benches on which people can sit and enjoy the surrounding aesthetics, but it's also important from a practical viewpoint for people with disabilities, that is, some contact fragments that allow people with eyesight problems to navigate through the city with the help of tactile navigation technology. These are also elements that help people in wheelchairs to move freely and comfortably around the city. In most European cities, one will find so-called neighborhood-friendly zones practically on every street. In Ukraine today, this notion is nothing more than a touchstone. Irina hopes that her experience with concrete will help equip and decorate the streets of Kiev with aesthetic and reliable shops, flower pots and flower beds. My big idea is to encourage every single resident of Kyiv to get interested in the space that they move around in on a daily basis. This should not only apply to transport from home to work or from the supermarket to your house, but also a great place where people would enjoy spending time with their friends. From comfortable offices and residential buildings to well-maintained, comfortable city streets, the history of recent years proves again that the ideas and aspirations of talented Ukrainians always outgrow the framework of the habitat.